So here we're going to look at water regulation in the human body. I have a separate video with osmoregulation relating to fish. Here we're going to look at the human body. This is an extreme case of water uh, dehydration in the case of the mummy here. So let's get a little bit more of a realistic situation here. Antidiuretic hormone, ADH, is part of a negative feedback system that regulates water in the mammalian body. ADH increases the permeability of distal tubules, allowing for greater water recovery. So for example, if a person is given a dose of ADH, then more water will be retained by the kidneys. So how does this look in an actual um, situation? So if we're outside, uh, heat will cause water loss through dehydration through the process of sweating. Receptors in the hypothalamus, which is located in the brain, detect the increased blood osmolarity and signal the pituitary gland. It's the pituitary gland located right here that will release ADH into the bloodstream. When that ADH is released into the bloodstream, that will cause an increase in the permeability of the distal tubule in the nephron and in the collecting duct. This allows more water to be reabsorbed into the blood. This is again our nephron structure. And water will be retained in the body and concentrated urine is produced. So that urine is concentrated because the body is retaining more water, meaning that it's excreting less water, concentrating the urine, giving it more of a yellow to dark yellow appearance. Now, caffeine and alcohol and, and diuretics. Alcohol inhibits ADH release, while caffeine interferes with its activity. Part of the symptoms of a hangover are actually due to dehydration. So what causes dehydration in this case? And why is a cup of coffee not a good cure for a hangover? So look at some of the items here. We have our brewed coffee having, in this comparison, the highest amount of caffeine per cup. Instant coffee, Red Bull, black tea, can of cola, shot of espresso, green tea is decreasing it. Decaffeinated coffee, though, will have less caffeine because it is decaffeinated, but it still does not contain zero, contains less, but not completely eliminated entirely. Direct diuretics and weight loss. So many over-the-counter herbal diets uh, claim to detoxify the body or flush fat out of the body. Well, many of these contain dandelion leaves or parsley, or other herbs known to be diuretics, which increase the amount of water and salt expelled from the body as urine. So if that's the case, we want to consider if a person tries one of these products and appears to lose pounds, what are they actually losing? They're actually losing fat? They are losing weight, but is it actually in the form of fat? So consider what's going on particularly with the kidneys. Also, if they continue to use these for an extended period of time, could there be health problems associated with these products? Um, that are claiming to flush that and detoxify the body if they're diuretics and increasing amount of water and salt expelled from the body's urine. So consider that. Also, in the last case, uh, the kangaroo rat. Uh, this long tail, uh, kangaroo rat is adapted for the desert life and being able to survive with very little water. I want you to consider some ways in which the, the, its kidneys might be different from the human kidney to allow it to conserve as much water as possible. Again, it lives in a very arid environment. We may say, looking at the pictures here, well, it can just get water from the plants, right? It just eats the plants. Well, there's not a lot of plants available in the desert environment. So it has kidneys adapted to help it survive with very little water. So I want you to consider how the kidneys of the kangaroo rat may differ from a human kidney. What might be going on there to help it live in an environment where water is very scarce.